Hello, everybody. I have an incredible woman here with me today, Grace Miliaccio. I love saying that name. Grace, let's talk about all the great things that you do and lean into some advice that I know we're, we're going to share today. We can't wait. So, happy so to tell us, yeah, tell us what we what you do, Grace, and um, let's talk about this amazing CNN uh, article and how it ties into your life today. Okay, so let me summarize what it is I do in a few sentences. Um, I try to help both organizations and the people who work in them uh, find that match where people do their best work and that leads to extraordinary organizations, cultures, and results and finding the perfect intersection between those two things, people and their companies. Beautiful. I love to hear that because it pays attention to culture and strategy. So that is fantastic. So I briefly mentioned just a few seconds ago, this CNN article, which talked about it from a relationship perspective. But when you and I were in the green room, this article translates to the work that you're doing now and the advice that you get to give in your company um, for career advice. So let's tie that together for the audience. Let's share what uh, you and I were talking about and how the relationship with your now husband gave you some a decent level of maturity. Well, if I could summarize the story very quickly for those who haven't read Please. it. Um, CNN did a story on my husband that was resilience of a relationship over time. I met my husband when I was 22 years old. We fell madly in love. He was Australian on a visitor visa. And for the period of time that we had the pressure of the visa, it was the highlight of my life to that point. And we were madly in love. He had to go back. We were determined we were going to find a way to continue the relationship. And 22 years later, we found each other in midlife. And wow. once that opportunity presented itself for a second chance, we um, it was it was a very much scary thing to open your life up to somebody from another continent. And where is this really going to go? And am I just going to end up hurt or hurting him? Um, and so being open to the possibility of exploring it and and courageous enough to take the risk in an mm. way um, has resulted in now a 15 plus year marriage of being with your soulmate that I thought there wouldn't be a chance of having that again. I thought I missed my chance and here Aww. we are. So when I think about what does that have to do with career? I think we have these moments in our life where we have opportunities and you have to know yourself well enough to be ready for them when they come and have the courage to Maybe take a slight risk, perhaps a calculated one, but one that the payback is worth taking the risk. And so I would say this happened in my career too, where I've been pursuing something or dreaming of something and you have to pursue and be ready for it when it presents and not hesitate and walk away from it. It's about the courage to lean in instead of run away or shut down. Yeah. It's so important, right? The belief system that we have within ourselves. Um, and I will link this really cool article in the show notes for those of you who are interested in, in the full detail, but Grace did a nice job summarizing it. But there, there is a lot to glean from it from, you know, you had a gut instinct to not go on a plane. You were like set to go see him. And then you're like, I'm not going to do that. And then you bought a car and you live this different life. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think helped you make that decision? Was it your gut instinct, Grace? Like what, what got you there? Do you, you mean not getting on the plane? What made yeah. you? Yeah. Well, of course there's more to the story. Um, when you're yeah. 20 years old and at the time it was a dollar a minute to call someone, I didn't have many dollars for many minutes to do that. And so we would write letters back and mm. forth. When I would send a letter, I found out 22 years later, his mom would sometimes lose the letter and not give him the letter so that he didn't receive it. And so when I didn't get a letter back, I started to doubt whether his intentions were serious or perhaps he'd moved on. And therefore, why would I get on a plane to go halfway around the world using my last of my savings to do it? It just, it didn't seem like he was as committed, but there were other factors at play. You just never sometimes know what's happening on the other side. And I'm grateful to my mother and now mother-in-law for telling me that years later, because it wasn't, wow. it wasn't all him. But I do think in the end, Francesca, things work out the way they're supposed to. 
So I don't live my life full of regrets about those 22 years. I think we both live full lives that were meant to be lived before we got back together. So I don't, I don't pine for those years. I think that's such an important point right there, not to live your life in regret and know that it works out exactly the way it's intended to, right? That helps us shift into a more positive mindset and say, yep, this happened. I wasn't expecting it, but I'm going to move on and know that there are other things coming. And perhaps if you believe in this, if it's meant to be, it will find its way back to you. That's right. So how can we translate that then with your personal relationship experience into a professional one? Like yeah. What kind of advice can we glean from that? Well, I don't think when it comes to our professional lives, there are any bad choices. I just don't think there's a bad one. I think you take the options that you chose or were given and you make the most of those knowing that you're there for a reason and you're there to learn something that will build upon itself. When you look back on your career or perhaps life, you can connect the dots of, oh, that's why I was meant to know that person or even have that less than enjoyable career stint somewhere because I learned what I don't like or I learned how not to lead and how next time I'm going to choose better or lead in a different way because I learned sort of through adversity and trial that um, there's a better way or a different way. So I think we take all these, it's like the beads or pearls of a necklace and it becomes this beautiful thing once it's all completed. It connects together. I love that. What a beautiful metaphor. They are beads of a pearl necklace. And oftentimes, um, you know, this, this isn't my exact verbiage, but it's rejection is redirection. And that's intended for you to learn. And sometimes, you know, we don't know what we want but we know what we don't want and we can use that as direction. Say, so, okay, I want the opposite of this. And then you go for that. Exactly. It feels terrible at the time of the rejection when you don't get something, but there's a reason in the, in the big, bigger scheme of your life why that wasn't right for you and something else just around the corner is the better thing. There's always a reason in hindsight. And it doesn't feel it, but there is, you have to trust. You have to trust, right? Trust the process. So as we're rounding out the year, um, and perhaps there's someone listening who's, you know, looking for a different career path, maybe within their organization or outside of their organization, what what career advice would you would you share with them based so on goes, your experience? Yeah. It goes back to that um thing of knowing yourself when so my next story is my partner and my company and we start the experience in my next story with the getting to know yourself we call it the foundation and it's really understanding what's important to you what's not important to you I want to travel I never want to travel whatever it is about your life so you have some framework for knowing how to attract opportunities to you and with that foundation, you start to talk to people. And by the way, writing it down, not just thinking it in your head is so very important. There's a magic to writing this down and being very clear and explicit. I do believe like if so someone can read it or, or your angel or your guide spirit can read what you write down, but they can't read your mind. So with that in mind, you can attract opportunities through the conversations that you have, through the energy you give. And if I can tell a little story about- nice. How that worked. And when I tell the story, I don't almost even recognize myself in the day to day because I don't do this all the time. But but I think in these important pivot moments of your life, I knew I went to business school because I knew I wanted to work for a specific company. I didn't know what I wanted to do there. I just wanted to be part of the story. And the company was Disney. So once I got to business school, um, there were no jobs posted at Disney there, uh, but there were opportunities to interact with uh, people in the executive program or professors or other students. And when they'd say, what do you want to do? I'd have that split second moment where I'd say something related to what they taught or the, the executive from a company and try to like, do I say I want to work at IBM? Do I say I want to work at Hewlett Packard? I, or do I just tell the truth, the tr my truth? And my truth was I wanted to work for Disney. So I told everyone, Honestly, I want to work for Disney. What what I would do there, I don't know. What what does that even mean? California floor, what does that even mean? I didn't have an answer. I just knew Disney, Disney, Disney. And instantly, executives from other industries said, Oh, we know somebody there. Let us introduce you. 
which led me to a person everybody wanted to meet, an executive at Disney. And they parted the other people talking to him and said, hey, this is Grace. We met her across the room. She wants to work for Disney. And he took a shine to me because I'd said it to not him to curry favor, but to somebody because I really meant it. And he was the one who ultimately hired me in the dream job at Disney. Um, so I tell you that because you have to have some thread of something. I want to work for a big company. I want to be part of a team. I want to work remotely. Have a nugget that you can share with other people because I think people want to help others. I think that's innate. And most people do want to provide some sort of guidance or help if they can. And so if you can articulate what that help is in some way, I want to do this, people will conspire to help you and opportunities will be drawn to you. So I guess that's the first advice is know yourself first and yeah. have you can share with others who innately want to help you get it. I love that. I love that because it is truly important when you know yourself and then you start to have the clarity for what you want, right? This is who I am and this is what I want, yes. right? And you articulate it. You say it out loud. You write it down. I agree with you hundred percent. There is something magical when you write it down that you kind of sense it and feel it and then you read it and then you're reminded, yes, this is what I'm going for. It's so powerful to write things down that you almost have to be careful what you write down because I believe it will happen and it may have <laughs> consequences. Behind me is a binder. Remember the old days when we used to have ringed binders that were our time management systems? <laughs> yeah. So those are long gone. But in the day, I wrote early in my life, married life, career, um, what I, I, tic I, I pictured my life. And I wrote on my future vision board that I wanted to have the job in the corner office. I wanted to have 2.2 kids. I wanted to have um, a four bedroom house and drive a BMW. I, I literally wrote those four things down and I can show you the pages. So fast forward, nobody uses those books anymore. You move to a Palm Pilot, then a Blackberry, then an iPhone. I was going to throw away the binder no longer need it. So I open it to see what I actually just to make sure I wasn't throwing anything important out like photographs. And I see this page and I realized my life has become what I wrote down. And I had the house and the kids and the corner office and even the BMW. And you know what, Francesca, I wasn't happy in my life. And I look back and realize I wrote material things that maybe were status symbols or what I thought were symbols of success, but I forgot to say, be happy. I want to be healthy. I want to be active. I forgot to write the things that are really important in life. So when you're writing these things down, be really intentional and don't take for granted that happiness and health are assured simply by having a BMW. I just got the chills from you saying it because it does resonate even for myself, Grace, because I dreamed of the material things as well. And then we realized the true value is in the immaterial that which you can't see but you can absolutely feel and i i agree with you a thousand percent just like your name says mili and it's just for those of you um who the italian word for a thousand is is the beginning of grace's name so or last name so absolutely it's that feeling and don't forget to be happy and finding joy um because i I was in the same race as you, like the, the race of have to have this, have to get this, get a, have to get the title, the corner. And then you're, you get there and you're like, mm, no, something's missing. Mm. Intentionality. Yeah. Intentionality. So many nuggets here um, that I can't wait to highlight um, at the end, but in all of this incredible work that you get to do, is there a favorite piece of clothing or accessory? And how does it make you feel? Speaking of feelings. Uh, you may think this to be ironic, but I honestly adore and collect flip-flops. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh my gosh. I would love a life that I only ever wore flip-flops. And I'm saying this to you on a very cold day where I can't wear a flip-flop and I want to be wearing flip-flops, but <laughs> I have a collection. I couldn't have enough of them. I know I don't need one more and yet I buy more every year um, because it symbolizes summer, uh, which correlates to relaxing and happiness and times with family. And it's sort of what life's all about. 
So if I could live a life where only flip-flops were ever required, that would, I feel like, be just this little notch more fun to live a flip-flop filled life. life. And why? Wow. Well, I would say since you've articulated, maybe if you write it down, I'll meet you on the beach. <laughs> yes, it's going to happen. I can't wait. It's going to happen because you said it and you want it. And there is a lot of happiness and joy with the sun and digging your toes in the sand after you take those flip-flops off. I think that's an exact right answer. And I love it so much. It really touched my heart. You have so many nuggets of wisdom with all your sage advice. And if someone wanted to continue the conversation with you, Grace, where's the best place for them to find you? And I'll make sure that I'll put the links in the show notes. I do think the best place is LinkedIn. Okay. That is, that is just the easiest all around place to find me. And Great. I don't think there's many Grace Migliaccios on LinkedIn. So I'm pretty easy to find. Yeah. Just like there aren't many Francesca Zampaglione. So there we go. But I, that's perfect. I'll put that link in the show notes and then they can, you know, connect and follow. And I'll, and I'll just add that if they want to connect with you, they can just say, I heard you on a podcast with Francesca, just so you know, you know, where these people uh, come from. And so you can make that connection and continue this incredible conversation. But I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for being yeah. interested in a little nugget of my story. Thanks so much for that. It's a great story and I'm I'm honored to to share it on this platform and hope that a lot of people get to hear it as well. So um, enjoy your day and thank you again, Grace. I appreciate you. Thank you, Francesca.